the number one top rated mod for all of StarCraft II is still the Cyan Custom Races, designed by Solstice. It introduces two alternate balanced races, the bizarre cousins of the Zerg, the Zayad, and the Borg-like AI, the Genitron. It's your same real-time strategy and maps, but with all new units that are close enough to be recognizable, but different enough to give you a new experience. In a moment, I'm going to play my first, and thus far only, cast of a Genitron vs. Zayad game. But before I do, just two footnotes. First, I'm going to assume that the viewer is less familiar with these units. So if you're already a fan, there's going to be a lot of Captain Obvious moments for you. So just bear with me. Second, our players today are hobbyists as opposed to full-time professional gamers, probably with full-time jobs and families, so they may not have the godly pristine macro we usually treat ourselves to on this channel. That said, I think you'll find they're pretty dang good. Enough wind-up, let's dive in, enjoy! It's GVX, Genitron versus Zayad. Standing in for the Zerg is the Zayad race, and you are looking at a scavenger nest. No creep required, live out your Zerg fantasies here. And on the southwest side of the map we have a processing core. And a hardworking ACR is building the very first processing node. Think of it as a supply depot, but it has an extra benefit. It also makes the command center, aka the processing core, regenerate energy faster. And for the Zayad we have our first feeding pool. Playing for the Genitron in the red is a man who is not available for hire because he is my life for hire! Don't know him, but I'm excited to see what he's got to bring for this tournament. And he'll certainly have to bring it because his opponent is a world beater in this game. You'd best put aside your quarrels because otherwise you're going to have to mess with Quarrer! Quarrer is a top Zayad player and I'm keen to see what he's going to bring today. Our workers cross in the center, our map is Zen, you'll remember this one. A very small map, but one that has tight chokes that makes it hard to cross. At least until it gets mined out. That ACR worker is going to see that there's a Zayad den about to complete. That's the Zayad's low-tech basic monster making structure. It produces its own larva called worms, and players will normally want quite a few of them. Quora is strategically putting it next to his feeding pools, because the feeding pools enhance the larva production, or worm production, I should say. Oh, we got a worker pinned in the corner here. ACR versus Scavenger, and that's gonna be a first blood. I don't think that Scavenger scout actually defended himself. Genetron adds an additional processing node, and our Zayad player starts a mutagen chamber. That's a big one. It's gonna unlock some key units, and it's gonna provide some upgrade options. And spawning now is our first Zyadling. What if Zerglings had way more hit points and could shoot from range? That horror would be a Zyadling. Both our players are expanding to well-protected naturals. My life for Iyer has a manufacturer going. Right now that's letting them produce Spitfires. Think of them as Hellions with machine guns. They're quite a bit slower till they get their speed upgrade. One of the themes with Genetron is they really need their upgrades to unlock their potential. So you gotta keep on them. Genetron players love their Spitfires, no gas required, 100 hit points. And back at the Zayad Ranch, there's that expansion on its way. You can see the mutagen chamber is done, and Quora is going to add a second Zayad den. And he's got a roamer on the way, I love the roamer. It doubles as a combat unit, but it's really made with scouting in mind. It's fast, extra damage versus light to hunt workers, and it's got this super cool farsight ability called Scour. I hope we get to see it in use. Genetron adding additional processing nodes. We haven't seen any uploaders yet. Most of the Genetron buildings, at least the production facilities, can be enhanced by adding uploaders. They reduce your build time and unlock higher powered units. So part of the Genetron strategy is which of your buildings are you going to prioritize by having those uploaders link up to. We do have a Genetron ACR hiding in the top. In a normal game, that means proxy, but for us, who knows? Here comes our roamer. I want to get a look at him. Oh, give me a home with the Zyad roam. Sorry, you knew that had to happen. And the Genitron just have to die. Okay, that one probably didn't have to happen. 
Okay, we've actually got a rumor trying to sneak in here, but he's blocked by that processing node. He's only got 80 hit points, so he backs off before those Spitfires can blow him apart. Oh, and there's a scour. Watch this. Move over, Adept Shade. It's instant long-distance vision. Now, the cool thing is you can actually shoot the scour and stop it, but it's really hard to do. How cool would it be if you could actually deflect a comm stat? Okay, we do have a proxy for our Genitron player, but not just any proxy. It's a fabricator. And no, it doesn't make cheap knockoff goods. It produces higher tier Genitron ground units. The mech. Genitron is sort of, what if Skynet took over the Terrans and decided to go mech full time? Meanwhile, my life fryer is building turrets in both his bases. The interdictor is an air defense turret. You see that? The processing core just buffed all the workers' ability to mine. Money's gonna start pouring in. And we've got our first uploader. It's being put next to that fabricator. My life for ours has got a plan to build something expensive out of that fabricator. He's making two uploaders. A torrent pops out. That's an anti-air unit. I don't know how that gets used. I think Iyer was just building something while he waits for his uploaders to complete. You'll see how the uploader connects its data stream right to the fabricator. Oh, Quarter is trying to get a third down, but it's going to get intercepted by this Spitfire. He needs to kill the worker. You know, I always think of drones having to turn into structures as a disadvantage. But, as you can see from here, it's almost advantageous. Now that Quarter has lost his scavenger, his building is halted. He's got to get another worker down there like a Terran. Okay, so the torrent is being brought back to the main base. Which makes you think... It's definitely not part of the proxy plan. The real plan is to build inciters. Oh, this is bad for the Zayed. This is like a cross between a Reaper and a Banshee. I love how you can see the units getting built. Kind of like a Protoss Stargate. Inciters are nasty harass units. Expensive, but they can really kill workers. And back at the Genetron Ranch. Oh, we can see some more of those productivity enhanced ACRs. And each of those manufacturers now has an uploader on it. We'll have to learn what that unlocks. Quora's third is getting rebuilt. We can see it's almost done. And he's adding two biomass hatcheries. Instead of worms, they make grubs, which is a way of saying larvae that produce deadlier, more expensive units. And by his natural, there's a bile pit next to those feeding pools. That's the Zayed defensive turret. Hits air and land very fast. But look at this defense, acid nests. Quora's picked up a unit called the Prowler. I think of them as Zayed ninjas. They can leave traps. The acid nest is like a static burrowed baneling. It's a cloaked mine. My life for ire can't see them. Not without detection anyway. Those are the prowlers putting them down. You have to pay 10 minerals, 10 gas for each of them. The prowler also has this great combat spell called blinding burst. OMG, the insiders are ready. Watch this. They've just gone around all the defense. They're making their way behind the mineral line. My life for ire is gonna target the workers. Oh! There is a single bile pit there, but there's 210 hit points on those inciters. You can't bring them down fast enough. Oh, and they get position over the natural. There's the blinding burst. The prowlers with the city. The inciters are debuffed. They can't attack. It's like a raven's interference matrix. Prowlers are so awesome. But the inciters did do their damage. Quora is way down on workers now. My life for ire makes a fabricator back at home. Quora is going to make a Kaznalisk den. That unlocks the Kaznalisk, which is a powerful spellcaster. Quora is going to try to micro his way back into this game, but he hasn't found the proxy. Iyer's going to go ahead and build more insiders. He's going to do it again. That's a processing drone scouting on the south side of the Zayed base. That's a detector that you can actually make out of the command center of processing core. But it also has a powerful debuff spell. Quora is looking to push out. He sees the processing drone, but it's a distraction. The insiders slip in and go for the natural. Light damage blast grenades, not what you want in your mineral line. The acid nests are no help at all because he snuck behind them. Quora is scrambling for the cleanup, but the reality is he's now down 30 workers. The positive rainbow for Zayed here is that his biomass is up and he's now making revilers. That's a very high DPS unit and he's got lots of Zayedlings to screen for them. The Reviler's got this great increasing attack speed thing going on for it, but it's only got 145 hit points. So you really want to partner it with something that can screen your tank for it. So Quora's pushing out. He knows he needs to equalize this game fast. Getting a free insider trying to find its way home is a good start, but he'll need to do more. My life for Iyer is outmining him so badly right now. 
there's a scour going up top so we can get vision of that high ground. He's trying to find a place to do some damage, but there's nothing at that third base location. I do see, though, that Quora is droning up heavily behind this. If he can keep my life for ire busy long enough, maybe he can catch up. Is he droning up or is he scavenging up? I need to learn all the new lingo here. Well, right now he's switched to making a big round of revilers. You think with a name like that, they wouldn't be quite so popular. My life for ire is actually building another inciter at that proxy. If it worked twice, might as well see if it'll work a third time. Oh, the revilers are being backed by eroders. That's the roach-like tank unit. It's got 200 hit points, which is a lot for the Zayad. And whatever the eroder hits, it has its damage eroded. Meaning they suffer a debuff, which makes it even harder to kill that eroder. My life for Ayer is expanding again with another processing core. But he's being conservative. He's locking it down with a bunch of turrets. And he's built a mole. I love these. It's a gun that buries itself so it can have a long-range deadly attack. The net effect is vaguely reminiscent of a siege tank. Oh, here comes Quarter. Oh man, I talk up the mole, but he's just going to get steamrolled by that army. Quarter is still way down on economy, but he's actually got himself a pretty decent army now. His problem's going to be that my life for ours has really dug himself in with turrets. There's no easy take here. He's really going to have to show us the might of the Zayat. The red dots on the Zayat means that the processing drone has hit them with weakness. They have been analyzed by the Borg, and now they take 20% more damage from hits. That is not what those revilers wanted. They have been forced back, and the Zayat are behind on army supply once again. The good news is the assault is letting them take the fort. That's going to help the Zayat catch up on bases. Our players are actually quite close on resources lost. Their efficiency is very similar. It's really the out-resourcing by my life for ire that's making the difference right now. Oh, Quora is heading back for the safety of his acid mines. Let's see if this works. My life for ire has the detector, but he has to activate it. He has a vague idea that the acid nests are there and he pulls back. There's actually an upgrade you can get that leaves behind a pool of acid after they explode. But Quora doesn't have that quite yet. Quora is going to preemptively pull his drones. He's worried his fourth is doomed. Oh, and doing so is finally going to let him get sight of that proxy. But they might just attract the attention of the inciters instead. Which is pretty much their worst nightmare. If their nightmare had grenades and armor. And the mercy of an AI. Hey, does Alpha Star like to play Genetron? Quora is going to swing his army up north to deal with that proxy. This is a battle he can definitely win. And then he's going to take a new base while he's at it. Oh, five scavengers obliterated in one shot. Make it seven. The inciters are dead, but I think my life for ire got his money's worth. The proxy's going to fall as well, but we know he got his money's worth for that. Oh, I think we're going to see something cool here. When a Genetron building goes below 25% of its health, it goes all matrix. That state's called lockdown. The structure ceases to function, but it gains a bunch of armor. It didn't really help it here. My life for Ayer is going to pick up vengeance, though, and drop the Zayat base. Oh, he's reinforcing the attack with moles. Look at those things fire. The revilers take so much damage. Oh, Korra gets it. He's going to focus them down. I'm going to kill those moles. It's the last thing I do. It will be the last thing you do. Korra has to retreat to his acid nests. My life for Ayer is not quite brave enough to go up that ramp. His army's three times the size of Quora's at this point. He's just trying to find a way to end this. The acid nests are really acting like a critical form of deterrence at this point. My life for Ire knows they're there, but he can't see them. And he doesn't know how many. Nope, he's going to be brave and take the plunge. That's the right call. Weakness goes down on the Zayat army. And my life for Ire is on top of the Zayat production. He prioritizes the scavengers. They're fleeing. But the Genetron are going to cut them off. Oh, this is turning into a high-tech abattoir here. First we analyze you for weakness, then we carve you up. And you can see that the scavenger nest turns into a hatchery for a brief second. It does that before it pops and when it dies. My life for Ayer is completely maxed out now. He's got five bases, four of which are fortified with turrets. Quar is basically staying alive on a bluff here. What if he's got more acid nests than a Genetron can handle? My life for Ayer does not have an air transition handy. And as long as he's stuck on land and weak on detection, a direct assault doesn't sound too, too wise. And it's giving Quora a chance to try to rebuild his army. He really is at risk of mining out, though. His natural's oversaturated. 
A processing drone attempts to deliver an Amazon package, but is brought down by a barrage of Zayad. That's actually the Genetron uh, backstory. They were originally designed to replace hard-working Amazon package delivery people. Well, I don't think Quora had high hopes for that case. Maybe the scavenger nest turns into a hatchery at the last second with self-defense mechanism. Wait, hold your fire! I'm not really a scavenger nest! My life for Ayer, unfortunately, he didn't buy it. Quora just made a ton of extra prowlers. He knows the acid nests are what's keeping him alive in this game. He's making more. You want me? You gotta come through the acid bath! You soulless pieces of silicon! Actually, we're a 74.6% titanium polymer. Yeah, I bet it's probably pretty hard to insult the Genetron. Oh, my life for Iyer's not taking any chances. He's locking down that top left base. The Genetron turrets are really good. Both the Repulsor and the Interdictor have 350 health. And what we're actually not seeing is that you can actually bury the Genetron turrets. And then raise them for a surprise ambush. Kind of like the Terran Perdition Flame Turret in the campaign. Oh, I think my life for Iyer's thinking about ending this. Maybe not. Yes, he is! He's coming up the hard way! Oh, that was a lot of acid. And then the worst part is, after he takes the worst of it, he backs off. And now he's finding an even worse route to go through. Oh, he's taking some losses. I think that almost might be an even fight now. The Prowlers shoot off the blind spell. It's a Scion bloodbath. The Genetron army's down to Spitfires. Quarter is trying to lure him into more acid mines. It works! He's got that upgrade for that lingering acid. Somehow my life for Iyer has found almost every acid nest possible. But Quar has got no army left. He's down to his bile pit. And one prowler who's casting blind as best he can. Because he's deep, deep in the red and now he's dead. The scavengers have pulled a fight. They're using their dinner spoons. My life for Iyer is reinforcing with superior tech. The bile pit is gone. Quar is building 12 Zyadlings. Is that enough to get the cleanup? My life for Iyer's added four expansions to make a statement. The map is his. The Zyadlings dive in. Blitzers are being added in. Quarter retreats to his main. But the bio pit is already dead. And it's GG. And that is for some of us, or perhaps many of us, our very first Scion Races game. Stick around. I'm going to show you how you can play this game on your own. Why not test out the Genetron or the Zyad and see if one of these races is for you? It's completely free. But first I want to make sure I give credit to the man behind this. A lot of people have donated a lot of time to making this game work. Including Quarter himself, I understand. But the main guy is a guy by the name of Solstice. He has a YouTube channel. I'm putting his link in the description below. And you can find him on Twitter. So this is probably that 10 second tutorial that nobody needs. But let me do it anyway. You get into your StarCraft game. You pick a custom. And then you pick your map, just like you would always. I'm gonna go melee. That's gonna call up a list of maps. Good to see that Death Aura remains at number one. You can pick any map you like. Death Aura is good enough for me. And then instead of Create Lobby, you hit Create with Mod. Choose Top Rated as your search filter. That'll bring it right up to the number one rank. It's called the Scion Custom Races Mod. Then you just hit Create Lobby as you would normally. And just like that, you'll have the option to pick the Zyad or Genetron races. Give them a try and let me know what you think. I'd particularly like to know if people would like to see more VODs with the Scion races in them. I find it harder on the brain because I don't know what things are called. I don't speak the language. But at the same time, it's really fun to think about how the new units could give rise to new strats. I know I don't like change, but it's been 10 years. Maybe I'm willing to branch out a little. And if you're new here, we've got a channel with some great 4K content, so check it out. Lots of nail-biter games. But that's it for today, so from my base to yours, Zugs Wang out. Even the Genetron and the Zayat have bases. To continue your StarCraft journey, Nova advises you to click the video in the upper rectangle. But Kerrigan warns you to watch your six and click the video in the bottom rectangle. Or you can stim pack your StarCraft experience. Subscribe to Zugzwang StarCraft. Just hit the circle. From my base to yours, Zugzwang out.